Now that the table base and the tabletop is complete, we're going to go into applying the frame. Now this could be if you buy a table and a frame from us, or if you decide that you want to build your own table and you're just going to be buying a frame press from us. Again, the key with the frame press is you want to go with a three quarter inch thick top and you're going to want to make sure that you put a sheet of smooth Formica on the top of that. Uh, and that's key for a bunch of different reasons. One, it's going to help with creating your vacuum seal. And also it's going to help protect your membrane top. We're going to get into your baseboard, putting the connector through in the next section of the video. In this section of the video, we're going to be talking about making your baseboard for your frame press. This is to allow all the air to evacuate out of your frame evenly. Um, our standard frame presses are for 4x8 sheets, 4x10 sheets, 5x8, and 5x10. This will allow you to make your baseboard out of a standard 4x8 sheet or 4x10 or whatever size that you have. Um, if you have a custom size frame press, you are going to want to make sure that your baseboard is six inches smaller in both directions of the inside uh, diameter of your frame press. And that would be in your instructions. This is to allow the membrane top to come down and create a seal on the, clo on the uh, Formica. So once you have determined your size, um, we're gonna show you the next step. The next step for your baseboard is cutting the saw curves in it horizontally and vertically. For this size baseboard, I went with saw curves every six inches. With a standard 4x8 frame press or larger, we just recommend every 10 to 12 inches. And now what you're going to do, as an intersection of the saw curves, you are going to drill a hole through, and this is to receive your connector. Now if you bought a table from us, after you cut your saw curves, you want to put it on the table and lay out um, where you're going to drill that hole at one of the intersections. And the key is to make sure that that connector is when you drill, because you're going to have to drill a hole to your table, is not going to line up with one of the cross rails. One of the other keys to your baseboard is rounding all the corners over uh, with an eighth inch round over bit. And the other thing is I also like to take a file uh, to the corners and, and round them down. And this is just going to help protect your membrane top from seeing any sharp corners. You're going to need to take a two inch Forstner bit and drill um, a, a, a recess in the bottom of your baseboard around three quarters to seven eighths through to for your connector. And we're going to show you uh, putting the connector hole in your table next and you'll understand why we have this recess in the baseboard. Now that our baseboard has been completed, we need to make a hole for our vacuum connector. This is uh, where your vacuum line is going to go. What you do is slide your baseboard into position where the hole is, take a pencil or a pen, just drop it through and make a mark on your table. Then you are going to drill a hole through your tabletop with a three quarter inch Forstner bit and that will make sure that you have the proper size for your connector to drop through. Now that you've drilled your hole through your tabletop, you're going to take your vacuum connector, take the metal washer, slide it into place, you take the rubber washer, and you just drop it through the hole. The underside of the table, you'll take your lock washer and the nut, and you just slide into place. Now that your connector is installed, you can put your baseboard back into place. And now you can see why we have the recess. It's for the top of the connector to sit through. We are now completed the tabletop process. In the next section of the video, we will be assembling the aluminum frame with the membrane top. And then we'll be, after that, attaching it to the table and setting up your vacuum source. Now it's a time to assemble your frame. Uh, your frame is made up of styles and rails. Uh, the key that you want to do before you get it put together is make sure that you assemble it properly. There are stickers on your frame to show you. One is the back side 
and then on the rails it says towards back side. So what I like to do is lay it out. Then take the two short sides and take your angle irons and just slide them right into place. I find it easier once they're in place to put the screws in these. And just hand tight to get them started until we get it all assembled and then we'll tighten them up. Now that these are in place, we want to slide them into the long parts, the rail, the styles. And what I want to do is make sure it says towards back side. So this side is going to come over here and we'll just slide them right into place. Slide this one right into place. Then put our screws in. Then take the final side, slide it into place. Now it's time to attach your membrane top to your aluminum frame. You can see we've set the table aside and we flipped our aluminum frame over so it's paper side up. We've now clamped the membrane top in place. You want to pull it tight into the, the corners and use spring assembled. clamps, quick grips, whatever. And now we're going to start to make sure uh, attaching it to the, the aluminum the frame by revealing the uh, edge of the Now be careful on this part. The frame to float. This will we're going to the just the frame is to pull cut it a little bit. Back in. And peel the paper back to reveal the adhesive and we're going to just work from the center to the edge remove your quick grip and what you want to do is pull it in tight and the key on this is just gently push it down just just enough to tack it into place your top your membrane top is slightly smaller than the inside dimensions of the aluminum frame and this is going to make sure you don't get any ripples and then work from this side you want to go from the short sides from the center to the edge pull it in tight to the corner press it down gently then we'll go to the other short side again be careful just take your knife and just score the paper. Pull it back in tight into the corner. Just take your hand, gently put it down. Then we'll start the long side. And again, you always want to work from your center to the edges. As you can see, I'm just gently pushing this down. Once we have everything in place, all the ripples are gone. Uh, then we'll use a J roller. And the key on this is you want to make sure that everything is nice and flat. You can see there's no ripples. So you can just uh, end up using a J roller or wooden dowel, whatever you have lying around. And then once this is all laid out flat, just push it re down really good. Now that we have attached the membrane to the bottom, we're going to attach it to the outside of the frame. One of the keys is cutting the corner. See, what you want to do is just take your scissors, go right to the corner of the frame, and just, you're going to be trimming some of this as well. So just cut it, and then also do the other side. Just go 
in and we're going to also start from the short side and you want to start on the short side and again work from the center out so just then what I'll do is once these are in place I'll take my box cutter again and carefully just ride it right along the edge and you're good and do the same thing on the other side and then you're going to do the other short side and work your way around the frame now that the top is in place we will be uh, adhering the closed cell neoprene tape this is what's going to help create your vacuum seal so I like to start in the center on the front of the frame and what we're going to do is we're going to cut a notch because we're going to do a double perimeter. So we're just going to kind of cut an angle and you'll understand when we come around. Peel the paper back to reveal the adhesive. Start here. Get it started. And what I like to do is you want to put it to the outside edge. And you're just going to slowly just work your way around the frame. You can see when I come to the edge here, I kind of push my finger in so it stays to the outside edge all the way around. Okay, when you get to the end, what you want to do is kind of like do the same type of cut. And what you're going to do is peel the paper back. And what I like to do is just push it into place. The next step before we attach the frame back to the tabletop is an optional step, but highly rec recommended. You're going to want to take silicone and put a bead around and we use silicone and you want to make sure you get the two. It says uh, silicone two. Uh, you, the clear I like better um, just because it makes it look nicer. Um, and what you're going to do is we're going to come right to the inside edge and you want to make sure it doesn't, the silicone doesn't go up over the top. And we're just going to put a bead all the way around. Once the silicone, you put your bead of silicone down, what I like to do is just take a, a, a coffee stirrer, or you can just use a stick, you just kind of want to make a ridge. This will help take out any of the excess. And again, you want to ride it on the top of your tape to make sure you're not getting any silicone on the tape, on the top of the tape. It's okay that it, it rides down the frame a little bit. And this is just going to help improve your vacuum seal. Again, this is just a, an added step. You don't have to do it, but it's highly recommended. With the membrane top in place, cell neoprene tape also applied, we have placed our frame back on the table. It's now time to attach all the hardware, hinges, toggle latches. So what I recommend doing is getting an eighth inch drill bit. And what you're going to want to do Go right through to reveal all the holes for all the hardware. Just go all around the, your frame. Uh, the first set of hardware that I like to install is the hinges. So you're just going to take it, slide it in the back side. Again, slide them in. And you're not going to tighten them until we attach them to the aluminum frame. So all you need to do is take the Allen screws that are provided in with the hinges. 
Just put it in place. Once the hinges are on, you're going to want to attach the latches for the toggle clamps. They're, again, just the same Allen head screws. Just go right into the side of the frame, just tighten them on up. The toggle latches will come in two styles. One will have the T-nuts already installed and ones will not. The ones that have the T-nuts already installed are the ones for the front because you'll have access to the channel and they'll just slide right in and just slide them right into place underneath their counterparts. The side have the, the hardware installed here. These ones you're going to take and just take the, the bolts that are come in the bag with them, just slide them into place. Screw one in, and usually what I'll do is just kind of come over, line it up with the other hole, the other bolt inside the channel. And then before I tighten them, what I like to do is slide it in between like that, so I know where it's gonna go, so I know it's in the right spot, and then I'll tighten everything up. We're now going to put the lifter hardware on the frame and the table and then attach the lifters. So all you do is take the bracket, there's holes already in place, just yeah. now we need to attach the table clamp with the bolts, there are three quarter bolts. Just like you did with the toggle latch. And you want to reference your instructions for how far this is to be from the back side of the table. Um, I am pretty sure that it is four inches. So this, we're, uh, this is a smaller table, so the toggle latch uh, calls for a shorter throw. So uh, these ones are only going to be three and a half, but so you'll get the idea. Yours is probably going to be four from the back. And this is how you want to slide it into place. We're now going to install the lifters. It's pretty self-explanatory. There's a little ball and a hole. You take the lifter. Push it over, snaps into place, and then what I'll do is I will open the frame, get into position, and just lock it into place. After you have uh, attached the uh, lifter on the other side, we're just going to put in our bottom uh, shelf. You don't need to. Um, it's just something that we like to do. It gives you, uh, usually what we'll do, and you'll see it later, a little bit later on in the video, that we'll just put our vacuum source right on this. It gives you a nice place to keep on. You know, a lot of people will put their veneer down there as well. And it's just a nice handy storage area. Now that everything is put together, we've attached our vacuum. Um, all you need to do is slide the vacuum hose over the connector under the table. Put it onto your vacuum source. We're going to close the lid. Push our toggle clamps down turn on our vacuum.